Hi everyone, I'm Raji and this is the Intro to Web Development Workshop. Um, if you have never heard of web development before, if you don't know what front-end web development means, um, this is the place for you. It's our introductory workshop and it's divided into three sections, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So this workshop in particular is going to focus on HTML, which is the first of the three, and it's completely beginner-friendly, so um, don't worry if you don't have any like prior knowledge. Before we get started, um, here's a link to the slides in case you want to follow along and also a link to our GitHub repo. It has all the sample code that we're going to be going through today. Um, you don't need to code along, but in case you want to, like you can refer to this code as well. Okay, so before we get into like the chunk of the workshop, which is going to be focused on HTML, let's talk a little bit about the title of this workshop. It's called Intro to Frontend Web Development. And you may have heard this word like frontend or backend thrown around. But like, what does that really mean? Um, so in order to understand that, let's talk about what happens when you try to load a web page, right? So um, suppose you are the client, right? And your computer basically makes a request for, request for some web page, say like gmail.com or something. Um, there is a server somewhere that has the info that you need and the server will respond to you with that information, like with all the content of that uh, web page. So as a developer, your job is to basically take care of both of these sites. Um, the first one is basically like you need to code up what is actually shown in the browser. So like, you know, all the elements of the Gmail web page and everything. And that's called like the front end web development or client side code. And the stuff that happens with the server uh, is called back end web development or server side code. Uh, I'm not going to get into too much detail about back end, but um, just as a TLDR of what front end is, it's a website's front end is basically like what the user interacts with. So all the like content on the website, um, also all the design and some to some extent, like the behavior of all the different elements like buttons and stuff like that. That's what front end development mainly deals with. Um, so the, this workshop is basically divided into three, like I mentioned at the beginning, there's HTML, CSS and, CSS and JavaScript. And these are the three like foundation sort of of web development. These are the tools that you will be using to build your website. Um, HTML basically just focuses on the layout of the page and like the content of it. CSS focuses on the style and the design. And then JavaScript focuses on the actual behavior and like add some like action to your web page. Um, you don't need to worry about like CSS and JavaScript for this one. So we'll be focusing on HTML. So we're going to start like sort of coding um, some sample files in HTML so that you guys get the hang of what it looks like. Um, so if you want to code along, you can download a text editor if you don't already have one. The one I'm going to use is VS Code. Um, if you don't have VS Code and like you prefer like Sublime or Atom or some other text editor, that's fine. Um, and it's also nice to have Chrome because they like Chrome has certain tools that um, just make stuff easier for web dev. Um, so yeah, if in case you don't have them, like pause the workshop right now and just make sure you get them. Um, it's all, also fine if you don't want to code along and just sort of like watch through the lecture. Okay, so now that we have that set up, let's talk a little bit about like what HTML is, right? So HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. Um, it's a very complicated name and there's a very good reason why it's called H, like Hypertext Markup Language, but I'm not going to get into that for this workshop. Basically what it refers to is the code that is responsible for the structure of the page and like the content of like what's on the page. Um, so that's what basically HTML like um, does. And um, let's look at like sort of like an example structure of like what an HTML file might look like. Um, so this is just like a, a sort of like template or some boilerplate code to get you started with HTML. Um, and I will explain all the elements of on this page in, in a little bit, but the main thing I want you to notice is that um, if all the code is basically enclosed in these things, like in these, like, I don't know, like triangular brackets or something. And basically what we, like we call these tags. So um, HTML is entirely composed of these different tags. So there's like a head tag, there's a body tag, there's an HTML tag. And each of these tags has like a closing tag that like corresponds to it. So like if the body tag opens here, the body tag closes here and so on. Um, so that's basically the main structure of uh, what an HTML file looks like. And let's actually um, start coding. What I'm going to do is first make a new folder in which I'm going to put all my code. Let's call this hot nine. Okay. And I'm going to open up Visual Studio Code. That's the text editor that I'll be using. 
And I'm just gonna go ahead and open this folder, Auth9, in VS Code. So I'm just sort of gonna drag it on here and open this folder. So now my VS Code is basically like based in this folder and I'm gonna make my HTML file now. So the way you would make a new file is by just clicking this plus icon. So the plus is basically a new file. You can also do file, new file, um, and so on. So I'm gonna call this one index.html. So um, index is basically just like conventionally the name that you give the main like landing page of a website. Um, so that's why I'm calling it index.html. So Let's begin writing our code. The first thing that we need to do is basically tell the browser that this is an HTML file, right? So we need to define the document type of this file, which is gonna be HTML. And um, this is how you do it. If you notice right now, like VS Code basically auto-completed my code line. That's why I like VS Code because they do a lot of like this nice auto-completion. Um, the next thing that I'm gonna do is basically uh, put in the HTML tag. So this tag will basically tell the browser like where the HTML code begins and where it ends. Now inside this tag is where our web page will go. And there's two main things that are really in here. There's the head section, the head opening tag and the closing tag, and there's the body section. So the opening tag and the closing tag. So these are the two main sections that we have. And let's talk about what goes in each of these, right? So the head basically usually contains information about the file itself, right? So right now, for example, the only thing that I'm gonna add in the head is something called a title. So let's title our web page something. Let's say I call it password restaurants to try. Okay, that's the title of my web page. And let's see where this actually pops up. So I'm gonna show you how to open this HTML file in a browser. The way you do it is basically you just go to your file. So this is my index.html and just say open with Google Chrome. That's over here. And you'll see that the file is opened and it's fully blank right now because we didn't really add anything to the page except the title. And you'll see that the title has popped up as the label to your browser window. So that's what the title field is for. Um, and that's all we're gonna do in the head right now. Later on, you'll see like what else you can put in this head file, um, but for now, we're gonna leave it here. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is basically write something in the body section. Now the body section is where all the actual like code, like all of it goes, and that's where like the contents of the web page go. Um, so yeah, we're gonna get started with the body section and let me just write something, I don't know, welcome. So suppose I write this, the way I update my web page to reflect this is basically I'll save this file. I'm just using the command S shortcut. If you have window, it'll probably be control S. Um, and I, so I save that file and I just reload over here. Um, so that's all I need to do to sort of like update my browser with the code that I have on my editor. And now it says, welcome to hot night. So that's pretty cool. Um, but plain text is kind of boring. So let's write something better. So throughout this workshop, like for the rest of this, I'm just gonna keep introducing different tags to you. So let's start with like the header tag. So the header tag is basically literally what it like says, right? It's like a header tag. So you'll see what it looks like. Let's see this. Try new UCLA. Suppose this is the heading that I wanna give my page. I save the file, go over to Chrome, reload it. And this is what it looks like. So it's basically just, a a heading and the reason like you notice an h1 over here the reason there is an h1 is basically because um it's like the main main header right so there's like h1 through h6 i think so h2 for example is a smaller header so suppose i write i don't know meet fresh over here and i reload then you'll see that meet fresh is kind of like slightly smaller and so as the numbers go up the size just goes down so that's the point of the header but what if I just want to write like just regular text? Um, the way I would do that is by using this P tag. So the P, P tag stands for paragraph and it's basically just like regular text. So maybe I'll say like here, like, okay. I save that and reload it. You'll see that this just appears as regular text. So that's the point of the P tag. 
Um, but yeah, so now that we have this, it's all kind of boring because there's just text here. So let's add some images. Um, so the way I'm going to do this is basically use the image tag. So maybe let's say I want to add an image for uh, meat fresh, right? So over here, I'll do image. Now you'll notice here that uh, I just have like this weird different kind of a closing tag. And that's because image is basically what you call a self-closing tag. So you don't need an open, a separate opening and a closing tag for image. Like you can just, it's self-closing. So it just closes itself. I have this image tag here, but like what image am I talking about, right? I need to give it some, um, some information about where this image is located. And the way I do that is by specifying an attribute called source. And over here, I will write source here. Okay, before I put in the source, let's talk about what's happening here. Um, SRC is basically a keyword that stands for the source. And um, you this property is called sort of like an attribute of this tag. So the image tag has different attributes like source or height of the image or width of the image and so on. And this is how you specify the different attributes. Um, so let's actually add an image here. The way I'm gonna do that is I'm going to get an image folder that I have from here. Just going to paste it over here um, in my hot nine directory. So you will see over here, I already have three images like just ready to go. Um, so what I'm going to do is in the source over here, just going to write Yeah, in source here, I'm just going to put images slash and refresh.jpg. So this is the, just the relative path of um, the image right here. And if I go over here, you will see that there is a massive image of me trash right here. Um, so yeah, we definitely need to fix the size of this. And the way I'll do that is just by changing the height. So height is another attribute that um, the image tag has. And I'm just gonna specify 200 pixel and reload. And now it's a much more reasonable size. Um, it's you'll notice that like the width has also been adjusted. Um, so HTML is nice that way they like sort of auto adjust your height, uh, your width according to the height that you specify. So that's the image tag. Let's learn some more cool tags. No web page is complete without a button because obviously you want the web page to do some things. <laughs> um, so let me just make a button. And the way I'll make it is just using this button tag. So click here if you like my button i'm just going to reload over here you will see that i have a button here that i can click it doesn't do anything but i can click it <laughs> um but you also you'll also notice that this button tag is like not on the on the next line so in html um if you want to have just like a line break after some piece of code that you have you can just add the self-closing br self-closing br tag um so br basically stands for like line break literally and you can just add that. And now if I go and reload, you'll see that the button is on the next line. So that's pretty cool. Um, okay, so next up we will, okay, let's introduce some more tags. And to do that, I'm gonna add a couple more restaurants to make our web page a little more um, fun. So suppose the next one is Marukame. And I'm just gonna add another image here. Okay. This is my image. Right is two hundred. So um, now that I have this, so far this is what my web page looks like. I have a new image attached over here, and I'm just gonna add this new heading. Let's see, H four, and what to eat. So this is my web page, and now I want to introduce like another tag to you guys, which is an unordered list. An unordered list is basically what it says. Um, it's just a list of like bullets. So the way you specify that is by using this UL tag. And then inside of it, I will put each list item is denoted by an LI. Okay, so this is what each item is. So suppose you have udon here. You have Pura, and you have, I don't know, bowls. So suppose this is everything that you can eat in Algame, and I will go back and reload. 
and you'll see that I have this like bulleted list of just things that I can explore here. Cool, so that's one, uh, that's one other cool tag. For the next one, let's add another restaurant, which is my personal favorite, Squeezy <laughs> Cafe. I'm gonna add a picture for this as well. And a height, so it doesn't look too big. Oop. Let's see what this looks like. So, so far, this is what we have. Now, suppose in here, I want to add some information about Elise and I want to add certain links. So suppose say I want to link like uh, the Google Maps location of Elise Cafe. Um, the way I can do this is first, let me just give a heading to it, um, info. So the way you can add links is by using the A tag. Um, the A tag is pretty useful and it, it is also like the image tag in that it has an attribute and the attribute is href. href is basically um, the attribute that will specify the link that you go to. So suppose over here um, inside the A tag, I just have Google Maps link. What is the Google Maps link though? I, need, I do need to specify that. So let me go ahead to Chrome and find the address. Okay. So suppose this is the Google Maps address of Elise. I'm just gonna copy that and I'm gonna paste it in here. Cool. Uh, yeah. Um, so this is the link and now let's go and reload over here. And you'll see that there's this the Google Maps link, link over here. And if I click on it, it will actually take me to the maps location that I want. So that's pretty cool. Let me just go back to the page. Okay, next up, let's say you want um, to add some reviews for Elise. <laughs> so I'm going to add this. A cool thing about this A tag is that not only can you like link pages that are already on the internet, but you can also link your own web pages that you created. So for example, suppose I have my own web page called review.html, right? Just going to set it up over here. Um, we have talk type of HTML, HTML tags. And inside that, I'm just going to put a body. And over here, I'm just going to say, I love this food. Okay, so that's that's my review.html file. It's literally just like this plain file, right? Um, suppose I want to link that over here. I can literally just do, like make the A tag to say Raji's review. And for the href over here, I can just put review.html. Cool. So now if I go back and reload, you'll see that under review says Raji's review over here, down here. And if I click on it, it will actually go to this new page, HTML page that I created, which was my review.html, which you'll see here. Um, and it says, I love food. So that's pretty cool. Okay. And lastly, the final tag that I'm gonna sort of like tell you about is called the form tag, right? So suppose you also want to ask your, like allow your users to sort of input something into the website, right? Um, you just wanna create a form for that. So let me just say users review form. That's my title. Um, let's make this in H4. Cool. So under this, what I can do is make a form by using the form tag. And inside this now, I can I can specify the different kinds of inputs that I want. So suppose like um, my first type is just text. You can see that like um, VS Code is already suggesting all these different kinds of input types to me. Um, so I'm just gonna select text right now. Um, and so that's my input tag. So the type is an attribute to that input tag. And if I go back and reload this, you'll see that there's a user review form and there's an input box and I can type whatever I want in it, but that is it. I can't do anything to it. So um, let's add a submit button to it. So I'm gonna do another input and submit is also a type of input. So that's nice. And I'm gonna go back, reload over here. 
and you'll see that it has added the submit button. So I can just say like, this pool was not that great, suppose that's my review, and just click on submit. Right now, all the submit button does is like it reloads my play page and it clears the input box. But later on, when you learn about JavaScript, you will, you will be able to add more functionality to the submit button. But yeah, that's basically all the tags that you're gonna be able to see. Um, there is one last tag that I do wanna introduce you to, and that's basically the div tag. Now, let's suppose uh, you have finished this workshop and you're heading over to CSS and you know CSS is basically for the style styling of the web page. Suppose you wanna sort of like just select everything that is related to meet fresh and make the background purple, right? How are you going to select all these elements? Like we have all these different elements in meet fresh. There's the header tag, there's the image, there's this button and everything, but how are you going to select all of them together? That's where the div tag comes in. The div tag is basically just a container. Like it's like, it's straight up a box for all your information and you can just put all the other tags inside the div tag. And you can like, you can nest these div tags. So you can have another div tag inside a div tag, inside a div, div tag and so on. And if I save this and reload the page, you'll see that like, oh, there's a stray carrot here. Okay. Um, but if I reload this page, you'll see that nothing has changed. And that's because the div tag doesn't really like do anything. It's just like a container. It just wraps some of your elements. And you may not see why this is useful right now, but when you move on to um, CSS and JavaScript, you'll see that it's super useful. So yeah, that is all we have for today. Uh, those are all the tags. Um, you can head over to the GitHub repo and, um, you know, like if you, if you are confused about any of this code, you can also reach out to some of our mentors. Um, otherwise, if you're good with this, you can move on to the CSS portion, uh, which is gonna be the next workshop. So yeah, thanks for watching, bye.